So I watched a really interesting video on uh, Quanta magazine. I'll link it in the description below. It was called uh, the biggest breakthroughs in physics or science this year. One of the two. I forgot the title already. I thought it was really interesting because one of the things they spoke about was black holes. So they mentioned, you know, Einstein had his general theory of relativity. And according to him, if anything were to fall into a black hole or even come close to it, just be sucked up, torn apart and just never to be seen again. Then came along Stephen Hawkins in the 70s. And what Hawkins did was further develop this. He sort of changed some of the perspectives and views people held at the time in regards to black holes. But according to him also, if something was to fall into a black hole, it just would never, you, you would never, it will never return. It will just probably be torn up, whatever the case would be. You guys can tell I'm not much of a science guy, but I'm trying. But now you have Don Page, who's one of the friends of, who used to be a friend of Hawkins. And he's come around and said, well, no, if something were to, if you were to fall into a black hole, according to his understanding and his theory and his calculations, that if you were to fall into a black hole, you would eventually, particle by particle, re-emerge somewhere, somehow. We don't know how, but this is what would happen. Now, putting the science aside, from the perspective of the philosophy of science, what's very interesting is that once again, we're reminded that science is not absolute. It doesn't deal with absolutes. Two things I want to quickly mention here. Number one, that this idea that some of us have, that science follows this, this perfect line of progression, this linear line of progression over the years, decades and centuries is not true. Many times there are U-turns, many times you know, there are revisions in the theory, there are paradigm shifts. What's held to be true for decades is then later you know, rejected and something else is proposed instead and that's the nature of science. And the second thing we need to understand is that science does not deal with absolutes. It doesn't deal with absolute truths in any way, shape or form. Ask any respectable scientist and he will tell you this. Science deals with approximations, not absolutes. It tries to get us as close as we can to the truth. It's not absolute, you know, and, and it's limited to the physical material world. It can't tell you about things that are beyond this. Now here's something I want the atheist, the empiricist, the naturalist to understand. You know this arrogance that we have sometimes? No, and I'm not saying every atheist and naturalist is arrogant, absolutely not. But some atheists and naturalists, such as, you know, Richard Dawkins and, and, and the likes, this arrogance that they have, it's based or pegged upon this, this false notion that science is the holy grail of truth, that it can lead us to all truths. And anything that's outside the scope of science just doesn't exist or isn't true, it's, a, it's just a fairy tale. This is a false notion, you know, and we have to be a bit more humble. And humility arises when we really understand what goes, what's going on here from the perspective of the philosophy of science, that science is a method which is just simply trying to help us understand the material world to the best we can. That's it. That doesn't mean that it encapsulates all truths or that it can carry us to all truths. Look, let's, let's, let's put it this way. Let's put it bluntly. Let alone trying to disprove the existence of a creator or a god that's beyond the material physical realm. Science cannot even fully establish and prove aspects of the material reality. So I think that's sufficient to leave it there. I'd like to know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you're an atheist, you're a naturalist, if you have other views in regards to what I've just said, please do share them below. Till next time, take care.